Alright, so coming off the disappointment of 2030, it is time for 2031. As we've done the past few seasons, my recruiting board already set up. Uh, is it looking good early? No, not really. Uh, because since we did fall down from a four-star program to a three-and-a-half star, we lost some hours that we had um, a year ago. So we really tried to spread the wealth out here through the 18 players that uh, we have on the board. And we do have a good chunk of gems, and we're targeting two five-stars this time around. One at corner, and one at defensive tackle that is a gem, who obviously we are going very hard for right out of the gate. But stiff competition already here in the top eight, because Michigan and Georgia are above us, and they just... Bigger schools have just killed us in recruiting this entire time. So uh, this is an aggressive way to try and get recruiting done, but we're, we're certainly going to give it a go. Uh, we do have a quarterback on our recruiting board this year. Uh, not that we necessarily need it. Uh, we have some, some depth at the position um, for a little while, but... I think quarterback, at least until we find just a, just a stud, is uh, really going to be the way to go. Now, the 26th best player uh, at quarterback in the class, Emmanuel Way, might not be that. But he is a four-star gem, so we're certainly going to give that a go. As we currently trail Mizzou, and uh, interestingly enough, look at the teams that we have to compete against. There's really no powerhouse in there. I mean, Mizzou is the one that would scare me the most. North Carolina, but... I don't know. So we're just going to let this go here for a couple weeks. Uh, hopefully, we uh, make some ground on these guys. And if we're so far behind on some of these other ones, we'll go and redistribute those points uh, elsewhere. So we start the season with Western Michigan. Last year, 2030, year of big aspirations uh, as the number one team in the country. We lost to a Mac school in Central Michigan at home. Please, for the love of God... Do not let history repeat itself. This team... This team is broken. I don't know what... I don't know if there's a damn thing I can do to save them. We have opened up against Max schools each of the last two years with a 90-plus overall team both of those times. And we have lost to Max schools now twice. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's the kind of win that you need. Against an FCS team. However, with a 91 overall offense, you'd certainly think that uh, that we could score more points. But uh, such has not been the case here in building Michigan State. Bye week uh, to try and uh, kind of regroup and get this fucking team going, man. Not looking very good here on Duarte. Uh, those 30 hours that we have uh, freed up might just go to him. We're leading on Robin, uh, Robertson, which is big. I really want that uh, that defensive tackle. We've got a lead on Emirate Way. Emmanuel. What am I talking about? Emmanuel Way. And go down the board, and we just we lead on a lot of these guys. Outside of running back Mitch Groshik, which is a little concerning. And it was Van Horn, Greg Van Horn, a four-star corner that... Uh, has decided that he wants to go to Michigan. We finished third on his list. Michigan had a week three visit. My God. So, we can spend 25 more hours here on Duarte. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be enough uh, to get us back in the hunt here because we are going up against uh, three really big schools, Michigan, Notre Dame, Georgia, and then Georgia Tech makes the top five uh, for whatever reason, I guess just because he is from Georgia. But we're going to give that a go, uh, see if that works out. And then who could use just an extra five? Who are we in a tight battle with? McNutt. George McNutt, the defensive end, four-star gem. He'll get it for now and uh, see if we can't get some commits here rolling uh, in the next couple weeks. That uh, late push there for Artie Duarte, the five-star corner. Not good enough as we do not make his top three, but that competition was stiff from the very get-go. So off the board he comes. We lead on Robinson, which is good. We got a substantial lead, and the good news for us right now is there's no visits. And it looks like we're going to be able to push him uh, to his top three this week. So hopefully that uh, that comes very soon. Emmanuel Way is actually already looking at committing, so that'd be a good chunk of hours we can distribute elsewhere. Dalton Carlisle, the wide receiver. I mean, I want to be able to throw the ball. I really, really do. Um... 
right now. <clears throat> and I mean, after after we got two true freshmen this year, looking at at least one other here in 2031. So we'll we'll just send the house on him, up his hours just a little bit. For Deshaun Good. You know what? Actually, let's just go in and take out the 35 that we gave these other guys and just start sending the house at them up their points up their hours that we've uh that we're offering to them and uh hope that that makes a little bit of a difference when it comes to george mcnutt it is a little urgent here so i might say fuck the rest not use necessarily all of what we can but a good chunk there 60 there on mcnutt because i want to get him to commit before wisconsin gets that week 10 visit we're a long way out from that so that shouldn't be too much of an issue he'll make some sort of decision before then but the quicker we're able to get him to commit the better so then we'll go down here to muhammad adai targeting two four-star gems at defensive end and then how are we how are we doing with a die? Ooh, visit with Stanford coming up. 75 hours to a die. And that's all the gems. So in fact, there's seven gems at the top of our board. We're actually looking pretty good on all of them right now. So hopefully, hopefully we really force some commits. And we might even get uh Emmett or I keep calling him Emmett. Emmanuel Way this week. And, you know, not the most impressive win you'll ever see. 21-14 over, over Miami of Ohio. But they were 2-0 to start the year. No idea who they played. I guess we'll take it. Uh, now we've got Penn State, who we have had success over at various times throughout this dynasty. And Penn State has start, started the season 1-2. So, this feels like a, a game you got to win. You got to start Big Ten play 1-0. All right, so we did get a manual way. That's good. So that frees up 75 hours. Tucker Banjo. Oh, we missed out on Tucker Banjo, guys. He goes to Ohio State. Now, I really feel like I should have more hours there, unless I just didn't even spend any on Banjo in the first place. That brings our board down to 15 targets. So let's start taking a look here. It's only Michigan and Michigan State competing here for Jimmy Bullock. Now, we already have a quarterback commit, so truth be told, I don't really want to do any more with Jimmy Bullock, and if Michigan catches us, they catch us. Not really too worried about that. The running back in Groshik, I don't think there is any saving this, but let's see if we can't try. We don't know his interests necessarily. But if we can hit those two at the bottom and then just some random one. Now, those grades aren't great. Our grades have actually really dropped here in the last season after our 6-6, six and six, or I guess 7-6 and six effort last year. I don't know about this hard sell. Can I hit coach stability and conference prestige in the same sell it's not really looking like it oh wait wait no um now this is a real risk but then again we don't really have much to lose we're so far behind uh arkansas for groshik so it really won't matter all that much uh in my mind Juan exum currently we lead um Got 35 hours in on him. So take all of that out. Give him the 50. Lonzo Landry, right guard. We lead there too. And we're going to be able to at least send the house on him too. We're already getting towards the bottom of our board. And a couple more commits. We'll be able to really start pushing hard here on everybody. And then... <clears throat> Jimmy, Jimmy Bullock was a quarterback that we didn't need to do anything extra for. Duke Leal, you know what? He's nearing a commitment, so... Well, I guess we can't really do that much. So what we'll do is we'll just give him five, and then 
Eakin as well. There's some visits coming down the road with the other two schools in his top three. Not super worried about them right now. Uh, and this is a defensive end that we're actually looking fairly solid on right now. Uh, with the die and McNutt. McNutt, I think we get. A die, I'm worried there about Stanford. Huh. Now, this might be a terrible Penn State team. I don't know. But that's a fucking game that we just don't get very often where we need it. Need to start Big Ten play 1-0, and and you go out there and get it. That's outstanding. 28-point win over Penn State. And, yes, I mean Penn State. All right. Robertson looking very close to committing, and Georgia and Michigan do not have visits. I think we're going to land a five-star gem of a defensive tackle. That could be outstanding for us. Carlisle, it's a little lead. But I think it should be a big enough lead, especially if we're going to be able to do that there. Still lead uh, considerably here on the tight end, Deshaun Good. So we'll get him up to 65 hours. Carney. Still a little bit farther out in his recruitment than I would like at uh, left tackle, a four-star gem. But that is what it is. And yeah, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get George McNutt here, and we actually already got a die, which is a little surprising to me. I didn't think he was gonna commit that week. Um, let's fully max out McNutt just in case there's any funny business there with Wisconsin. I just I want to get him if we get two true freshman on this team and a die and McNutt at four star gems that could be a huge get for us so then 80 hours left as we head to Jimmy Bullock I'm gonna continue to leave Bullock because Michigan's not really doing anything right now Groshek goes to Arkansas as we did expect and then Exum he'll get 15 more Landry at right guard lead he'll get 15 more and then I think next week is going to be the week where we uh, head back into the prospect list and really start to see if there are any stray four stars. We've had a lot of luck with that over the years of just finding some, some gems. Now, we haven't really necessarily been able to keep those gems, but it's been good enough. A little bit of panic mode here on Glenn Eakin. Although, we're going to get both of the both of the gems at defensive end. But some good depth never hurt anybody. We're not going to be able to go too hard on him. He'll get 65 of the 80 we can spend. And that will be our recruiting done. How are we doing on Ibrahim? Leading there. And then BB, we are trailing Ohio State. But as long as we get one of these two guys, neither one of them were a gem. And Ibrahim was the higher ranked player anyway. So, not too worried about that. Competition is stiff, but right now we're fine to leave that as is. There we go. That is back-to-back -back solid performances by this Michigan State team to improve to 4-1. and one. Really tough game coming up right now with USC, who we're actually in a battle with on the recruiting trail as well. They are also 4-1. and one. If we can go into the Coliseum and take down USC, I think we crack the top 25. Even with a loss to a now 2-3 and three Western Michigan team. In the recruiting, we got Amari Robertson. That is outstanding. As long as this guy isn't capped to hell, <clears throat> we're going to be great. Number 10 player in the nation. That should be a big get for us. Carlisle, we lead. There's a visit with Mississippi State coming up that does worry me a little bit. That Kentucky visit shouldn't really come into play there for Deshaun Good. I can still see Kentucky jumping us. You never know. Uh, Indiana on Juan Carney. That is scary. We were going to leave Bullock. Doing pretty good here on Landry. Leal and Eakin both committed last week. And then BB goes to Ohio State. We knew that was going to happen. This will be the week that we send a little bit more here. And in fact, all that we can on Terrell Ibrahim, the middle linebacker. The outside linebacker, rather. So now... We'll take a look at the prospect list, see if there's any stragglers at uh, at least four-star, and uh, go from there. Yeah, there we go. This offense is really clicking now. That's 30-plus points in three straight games after really not having much of an offense in non-conference play. Now, USC, as you'd expect, uh, did put up more of a fight. We only win by seven. 
But that is a massive win. Now we take on 1-4, 0-2 in the Big Ten, Indiana for the Old Brass Spittoon. All right, so we have a good chunk of hours to use this week. I'm going to take that as a good thing. Robertson and Way were already committed. Carlisle looking actually fairly good. We're not quite getting there to week nine yet. And then there's Clemson, who's scheduled a visit for week 16 for no good reason. Deshaun Good, it's really getting close there with Kentucky. Let's take it a look here and see if trying to soft sell him on something is uh, is going to be a good move. No, those grades really aren't that good. <clears throat> I think we're going to be okay. Whoop. If we just, if we do 65 here on good, I think we're going to be all right. We've already got one Carney at left tackle. We already got McNutt and a die at defensive end. How's Bullock doing? Michigan's closing in, but we might get him too. And we don't even need Jimmy Bullock, but that'd be nice. Then we go to Juan Exum. That's still looking all right. Those visits are still a ways out. Landry, Leal, Eakin have committed. Ibrahim should get there. Uh, the fact that Buffalo has a higher chance right now of landing this guy than Michigan does is very, very interesting. We're on the top on Renfrey, even though I guess we are his only offer, even though we just added him to the board. So with 155 hours, we're going to be able to get these guys up to 65, no problem. And then just hope for the best uh, the rest of the way here. Now, really, I probably should have started with um, Blanco at the bottom. But we're going to have enough hours to do this. It's not going to be an issue. And then we could realistically add some three stars to the board. Not many. But we could. So we'll take this 25 out. Add in that 50. Get him to 65. We're still left with 70 hours. How are we doing in top classes right now? Eighth. Certainly need more of those four stars to commit. And we're only going to land the one five star. That is what it is. But, uh, no, we're going to head back into the prospect list. And um, I'm going to target two three stars. See if I can't scout them. And maybe we get lucky and find a gem. As long as they're not busts, I will take them. So we're going to offer a scholarship here to Troy DeBeer. Every team needs their three stars. I already offered a scholarship to Josh Beckett, so we're going to hope that he's not a bust. And he's actually a gem. We will gladly take that. So we don't have a lot of hours to do anything uh, here with these two players this week. But he, Beckett and DeBeer, I will both send 10 just because we have them available. Tell you what. This is uh, this has really started to, to come together here. Through week eight, Michigan State is already bowl eligible. Now we're not getting any national respect yet. Six and one, um, probably because of that loss to Western, who is cheeks. But uh, things are looking really good right now. We've got a buy, so our focus will be on recruiting. And really, outside of the Michigan game, I mean, I think I think. Minnesota, I don't know really much about Minnesota at this point, but they should probably be beatable. Iowa, Nebraska, and Maryland unranked. We got a chance for a really good season if shit just doesn't fall apart. Ooh, well, that came out of nowhere. Deshaun Good goes to Notre Dame. RIP on that. We're actually going to land Jimmy Bullock here after not really committing too hard to him. Exum, really, really close. It scares me how long this is taking. But looking all set there on those guys. And then we'll head back to the three stars. And we might as well give them everything that we've got to give them. And, I mean, at a 19-player class, I'm pretty happy with that if we're able to land all these guys. If we aren't, then we'll, we'll regroup, but uh, Josh Beckett, we have not cracked that top eight yet. Hopefully, he doesn't even have a single offer from any of the schools in his top eight. So that's not really going anywhere, I wouldn't imagine. And with the hours we're spending on him this week, that should be just fine. So I'm really kind of content with what we're doing right now. I don't think we really need to add any more players to the board. If we do, that's going to probably be in the transfer portal at the end of the season. So... Right now, I'm pretty happy with what we got. 
So, into recruiting. Bullet goes to Michigan, but, I mean, that really... That was really just another attempt to just kind of get at Michigan. Um, we could have tried a little bit harder, especially there towards the end when we had the hours, but we, in theory, have our quarterback, so there wasn't really much of a, a loss there. Uh, now, unless he goes to Michigan and just absolutely starts dealing. So... Top 11 commits are on board here. Still very, very early on these guys, but a big lead. I'm a little bit worried about Blanco, the tight end, because Michigan does have that uh, pink pipeline, but they're not really doing anything as of yet. They haven't even offered him. So for right now, I think we're good. Unless we want to go back to the prospect list and, and just check to see if there's any four stars that are still around. I doubt it. There actually is Tyree Marcus, who's still here. Number two player in the state of Indiana. 83 nationally. And nationally here. I mean, we have so many hours. I'm going to add him to the board, scout him, and if he's a bust, then I guess we know. But if he's not, then we'll probably go after him. I mean, he might be moved to guard. But, I mean, that's fine. I don't care. It is what it is. Or maybe he's a solid center. Who knows? But uh, there's just been there's been no action on him. I'm really confused as to why that is. He didn't even have a single offer. Top 100 player doesn't have an offer. Well, we went into Kinnick and did what we've been doing to every team that we faced since Big Ten play started. 30 plus points in every game of Big Ten play. But now, a massive matchup with number 7, Michigan, who actually has more losses than us um, at Spartan Stadium. Michigan State ranked for the first time this season at number 18. If we manage, now this is probably me jinxing this, but if we manage to go undefeated the rest of the season, and our one loss of the year came to Western Michigan, what the hell? Not really much of a change on any of these guys. We lead on that Tyree Marcus that we just added. Everyone here is scouted, so, I mean, there's really just not much else for us to do. We're able to land all 19 guys that we have on our board right now, uh, including the 7, 8, 9, however many it is, uh, down here at the bottom. I'm, I'm good with it. That's a good recruiting class. Uh, it was a close game with Michigan, but we beat them 20 to 17. Michigan State is 8-1, number 9 in the country now, with an unranked Nebraska team at 4-5. and five. Minnesota, who slid out of the top 25, now 5-4, and four. and Maryland, who's 4-5. and five. The, the Big Ten is in our hands. We just can't find a way to fucking blow it. Back to the recruiting trail. Nothing has changed yet. Ooh, uh-oh. We actually got jumped by Notre Dame on Billy Acho. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right. Um, I don't necessarily love trying to soft sell him here, but I mean, it might be our our only hope. We know his interests. Those grades aren't great, but they're not bad. Two B pluses and one B. I don't know if that's going to be enough. It's really tight with Notre Dame right now. But we're going to try and do what we can. On hook, big lead. No worries there. Blanco, big lead over Michigan, who does have an offer in on him now. They're just not really doing anything. Troy DeBeer, probably going to commit this week for his only offer. I don't really know why. Um, Josh Beckett, close to committing as well, has an offer from Cincinnati. And Tyree Marcus, after two weeks on the board, does have offers from Nebraska and USC, which is a little scary. But uh, we will just continue on. Wow. We went from scoring 30-plus points in every Big Ten game that we played to only being able to put up seven against Nebraska. Now, that loss, while damaging, isn't as damaging as you might think. We are still first in the Big Ten, and if that's just going to be a one-week anomaly, that's going to be okay. We beat Minnesota and Maryland. We will be in the Big Ten title game. If we continue to lose, things could get really bad. 
Um, we should take a look at the Big Ten standings, but first I actually want to take a look at uh, the injury list to see if maybe that's why we got hammered the way we did. Ooh. Yeah, that certainly isn't good. Our 92 overall running back, Ahmad Aguilar, is injured, and he's going to be injured for five more weeks. So that is, uh, that's a big question mark when it comes to our running game the rest of the way. Yeah, that could do it. I was really expecting it to be the quarterback, though, and I don't even know how important Ahmad really has been to our season. I mean, it's a good season. It's one of the best seasons we've had at, uh, at the running back position since we started building Michigan State, but it's not really game-changing. I mean, he's going to fight to be a 1,000-yard rusher, or he was going to fight to be a 1,000-yard rusher. Oh, well. Next man up. And I do have faith in Chris Augustine. When we got to play with him, I was really, really uh, impressed with that. However, in the sim, an 81 overall running back might not do all that great, even though his speed is up to 96. Let's take a look at this. Ooh. Oh, fuck. Ohio State, 8-2 and two as well. 6-1 and one in Big Ten play. Number one, Rutgers. <laughs> oh, I've seen it all. The number one team in the country is third in their own conference. All right, still looking fairly good. This is really, really tight with Billy Acho. We just got to leave it how it is because we did pick up ground on Notre Dame this past week. So I want to say that what we did worked. So it's all it's all up to fate now. If he comes here, he comes here. That's great. If not, it is what it is. Nick Hook looking really, really good. We got commits out of Blanco, DeBeer, and Josh Beckett, the three-star gem. That's That could be crucial. And then Marcus is gaining some interest for some other schools. We were the first one to give him an offer. So we have a, a good leg up for now. But uh, who knows if it's going to stay that way. Offers from Clemson, Nebraska, who just knocked our teeth out in USC. Yeah, so it does appear, assuming that that Ahmad Aguilar injury happened either in the Michigan game or in the Nebraska game, um, assuming that, you can really see the drop-off in the offense from 30 points every single game in the Big Ten. Now, Michigan was ranked when we faced them. They're on a little bit of a slide since we beat them. But Nebraska, who is now ranked, they, they just killed us. And, and now, all of a sudden, we can't seem to score more than 20 points or in the Nebraska game. Seven total. So the stakes are now this. We beat a 5-6 and six Maryland team, hungry probably to get bowl eligible. And we will be in the Big Ten championship game against Ohio State or Rutgers. I'm not really sure which one. But uh, that's it. You got to win this game. So Acho goes to Notre Dame, but really if we take a look at this, that's not really all that costly. We had a gem in Juan Carney, we already got Exum, we got Landry, we got Leal, and we got Renfrey. We, are, we already have five offensive linemen in this class, so obviously you don't want to lose out on anybody, but that's pretty damn good. Uh, Vizcaino, he should commit. Hook. Big lead there. And Marcus, we got him inside the top three. No visits there. We might get Tyree Marcus this week. We lost to Maryland. We lost to Maryland, which knocks us out of the Big Ten championship game and likely the playoff. Oh. My God. Oh, my God. That's so brutal by two points. And this season just completely flipped. We went from, from an offensive performance you could be really, really happy with to all of a sudden this. Arkansas's Lloyd Carden, junior quarterback, just uh, shy of 4,000 yards, 42 touchdowns, only two interceptions on the whole year. We actually got an award. Chad Mixon, junior outside linebacker, wins best linebacker in the entire country. 15 sacks, 8 TFLs, 47 total tackles. Nice. Shame we went. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, this is this is a first for me. 
I have not played the Citrus Bowl as of yet, which is about one of the best bowl games that you can get to outside of the college football playoff. So that's pretty good, I guess. The only unfortunate part is it is against the Georgia Bulldogs. I would assume every one of these 18 players on our list here has signed. I've never really had a player flip uh, once they've committed. I, I understand that can happen, but I've just never seen it. You look at our class ranking. Ninth, it's not bad. If we can get some big wins in the portal, uh, we could really uh, shoot ourselves up. Maybe even get our first top five recruiting class. But there it is. Number 23, Michigan State. Number 15, Georgia in the Citrus Bowl. When we are back in building Michigan State.